So when Tom Perez became the head of the DNC, he promised fairness and he promised neutrality in the primaries because, of course, that was a giant issue in 2016. I mean, basically, Hillary Clinton and her campaign owned the DNC. They had a, a, an agreement, a contract with the DNC where they would get the last say on any press releases from the DNC. So what happened was the DNC feigned neutrality. When in reality, they were, uh, you know, linked at the hip monetarily with Hillary's campaign, and Hillary's campaign was calling the shots at the DNC. So all the Bernie people all along were talking about bias. It was more than just bias. It was literally an agreement between the DNC and the Hillary campaign. So that's why, you know, hey, let's, they tried to uh, not have as many debates, and then when there were debates, they tried to hide the debates, and they literally changed voting times in some pro-Bernie districts and some primaries. I mean, this stuff is in your face. There was, of course, the example of Donna Brazile, uh, when she was at CNN, slipped debate questions to Hillary before the debate. I mean, it, it was just through and through, finger on the scale, against Bernie Sanders and the progressive base, and for Hillary Clinton. So that's why, oh my God, they made this big thing of, who's it going to be, Tom Perez or Keith Ellison? Now, who do the people want? Keith Ellison. He actually represents the left a lot more than Tom Perez does. So, but Tom Perez won. That's weird. That's weird. After the establishment wing got destroyed in the election, you would think the Democratic Party would say, well, that was the wrong direction. Let's go to the left now. Nope. Tom Perez becomes the head of the DNC, but it's okay because they're going to work together with the progressives now. Where they're going to, Unity commission, unity, yes. We spit in your eye and rigged the primary against you, but we'll come together now. Well, they gave Keith Ellison this number two position at the DNC. It's nothing to appease Keith Ellison. I mean, that's basically what that is. And to try to appease the progressive wing. But they promised, oh, what we won't do anymore is we won't get involved in favor of the establishment candidate and against the progressive. Oops, look what happened. Breaking a promise, Tom Perez puts his thumb on the scale for Andrew Cuomo. By abandoning a commitment to strict neutrality and endorsing in a key race, the DNC chair undermines confidence in the Democratic Party. Did you know that in the age of Trump, the Democratic Party is raising significantly less money than the RNC is? The Democrats are raising less money than Republicans in the age of Donald Trump. How? This is fucking how. This is how. Nobody trusts you because they're right to not trust you. People are donating to Justice Democrats. People are donating to Our Revolution. People are donating to left-wing candidates, and they should. But nobody's donating to the Democratic Party because this is what the Democratic Party does. They spit in your eye. They work against your fucking interests. The Republicans don't do this to their base. The Republicans meet with their base, care about their base, push for what their base wants. You know, the anti-abortion people, Trump signed executive orders that are against abortion since he's been in office. The Republicans y unite with their base. Democrats fuck over their base. And then, they, and then they, they have the nerve to scold you when they don't win an election. Ah! You should have fallen in line. Now how about you should have fallen in line? How about that? How about you should have done the policies the base wanted and then they would vote for you? They're telling you what you need to do and you go, I'm not gonna do that, but how dare you not vote for me? Fuck off. Fuck off, man. God damn it. So listen, here's the point about this story. They still control the party. That's what it is. If you don't think that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and the likes of Andrew Cuomo don't control the Democratic Party, you're just factually wrong. Because why would... Tom Perez knows what he said. He knows that he said that, oh, we're going to be neutral now, we have to be neutral. He knows what he said. So why did he not stick to it? Perhaps... Because he didn't have a choice. Did that occur to you? He didn't have a choice. Because the people who ultimately cut the backroom deals to get Tom Perez in the position he's in now said, mm, neutrality is cute, but you're going to endorse me. Because these are the real power players and power brokers in the Democratic Party. It's still Hillary Clinton. It's still Bill Clinton. It's still Barack Obama. It's still Andrew Cuomo. The corporate Democrats still run it. And they thought, well, you know, like I said, it's cute. We could tell the progressive base 
that, yeah, that's what we care about. We care about neutrality. But when push comes to shove, if I want your endorsement, pfft, bitch, you're going to endorse me. So it's disgusting. And this is just like the DCCC has been working against progressive candidates. Listen, we need to overwhelm them by any means necessary and by every means necessary. That means where you can, you know, support a Green Party candidate, support an independent, or where you can support the anti-establishment Democratic candidate. Because we need to do to them not what they've done to us, because they've been unethical in how they've come against us. But what we need to do to them is overwhelm them with sheer force of numbers. And don't get defeatist and think that can't happen. That can happen. In fact, that's already happened in many of these races. In many of these, uh, you know, special elections and primary races that we've had since the 2016 election, Democratic Socialists are winning all over the place. Our Revolution and Justice Democrats have about a 50% win rate. The governor of Nebraska uh, race, you know, we got the, the left winger won the primary. So these fights are winnable. But we need to take stories like this and use it for the fuel that we need. Just like in the water boy, tackling fuel. I use it like tackling fuel. We need to have these stories pop up in our head come election time. Or even right now. If this inspires you to go fight back against the establishment through any means, please do it. You know, go... Um, Go volunteer for Allison Hartson or Amy Valella or go get involved in Democratic Socialists or the Green Party or just get involved. And we need to fight back against these people and we need to win because if they keep winning, then the country loses because ultimately they're guilty of what they accuse us of being guilty of. They accuse the Bernie people and the left. Ah, you guys gave us Trump. No, you guys gave us Trump. You did the Pied Piper strategy. You wanted to prop up Trump because you thought Hillary would have an easier chance beating Trump than anybody else. So you propped him up, then he got through the primary, and then he was able to beat you. And so you guys are responsible for losing to him, and now you have the nerve to blame us for him. Well, if you keep winning, the Republicans and Trump keep winning, the country can't afford that, and the country can't afford you, so it's time for that left-wing wave... But the left-wing wave has to be an actual left-wing wave, populist left wave. Not, a, not an establishment corporate neoliberal wave because that has disaster written all over it.